Hey everyone, welcome to another video of Macintosh Training. My name is Joel and today we are going to be looking at creating packages using Jamf Composer. Now, uh, specifically installer packages are what you use to uh, deploy any kind of file to a target machine. Uh, most commonly that's going to be like an application um, but you could use various other resources like a plist file, a font, um, really anything you want to deploy to target machines. Um, you can use this uh, you know, without an MDM if you really want to, like let's say you have a package that, or an application that you want to get out on the internet or something like that, um, and you can host it on a website so people can download it and install it. Um, I'm not going to cover how to use certificates with packages. If that's what you want to do with a, a Jamf Composer or some sort of packaging application, you do need to get a developer certificate and you need to configure uh, whatever packaging tool you use to sign those packages. Um, so just uh, forewarning, I'm not going to cover that in this video because that could get in the weeds very quickly. Um, what I'm going to look at today is just using Composer to create packages. Um, and we're gonna look at two easy ways to do that. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so on the machine here, my target machine that we're gonna use to create the package, um, I've just downloaded Google Chrome um, and it comes in a disk image uh, and I've got it open here. And what it tells you to do is, is put it into applications. Now, before you use Jamf Composer to package something, you wanna make sure that the things that you want to deploy are in the location they need to be. The reason that that's important is because Jamf Composer is going to record that location so that when you deploy that package to say 100 machines, it puts those files in the location that you had them when you packaged it. So for example, we want Google Chrome to deploy into the applications folder of the target machine. We don't want it to deploy anywhere else. So before we package it, we need to make sure we put it in the applications folder. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just drag it down here and you'll see it'll populate over here. If you've never opened Google Chrome before on the computer that you're creating the package on, it will probably uh, tell you that the application has been downloaded from the internet when you open it. I'll go ahead and open it here and see what it says. It may say, yeah, are you sure you want to open it? Yeah, we're going to go ahead and open it. And it may ask you some things about making uh, d the default browser or that sort of thing. We don't really care about that. We just want to make sure that it opens and works. So now that we've confirmed that it opens and it functions, we're going to go ahead and open Jamf Composer. Now, if you don't have Jamf Composer, it's pretty easy to find on the internet. Um, it, the easiest way would be if you have an account with Jamf, you can download it directly from your account. Um, but if you don't, uh, just look around. You, you'll, you won't have any trouble finding it. Um, a good, simple Google search should help you here. So uh, let's go ahead and open Jamf Composer. It's gonna ask for your password. We'll go ahead and enter that. And it comes up with this window that asks you these various different packages you can create and whatnot. Um, when I'm doing something simple like this, uh, creating a package for say Google Chrome, um, I don't mess with any of this. Uh, Apple is very, very friendly when it comes to drag and drop and Jamf Composer is no exception to that. So let's go ahead and hit cancel and you'll see there's basically nothing here. But what we wanna do is we wanna drag Google Chrome over into the sources area over here. So I'm just gonna click and hold and drag this over into sources. You'll see a green plus button show up there. And when I let go, it will have imported Google Chrome into this sidebar under sources. And if we expand the applications folder, you'll see that you have the path populated here for Google Chrome. So it basically imported everything we need. Um, we want it to deploy into this location and it already created the package for us. So there really isn't much else we need to do. If we wanted to add more files to this package, we could go and drag more in, but this is everything that we need. So what we're gonna do here is uh, just check the permissions on Google Chrome. When we look here, you'll see it actually is showing that it's owned by my current user account. 
Um, we don't want it to be that way. We want it to be owned by the root account, which is typical of applications. And we also want this to go all the way down to wheel. So we want this to be owned by wheel. It's probably also because, because uh, applications have uh, all sorts of uh, subcomponents within the, in them. You can see that if you expand Google Chrome and you keep going, you see all these various files in here. You wanna make sure that the subfolders have the same owner and group. So you'll see here, this, is, this subfolder still has Apple and admin as its owner and group. So we wanna make sure that we apply this to all of the contents um, for the Google Chrome app. So if we come over here to this little guy here, and you'll see there's all these apply to the uh, enclosed items. And I would just say, just go through and do it all because you wanna make sure that everything below has the same owner and, and group and has the same um, permission set as well. Okay, so that should take care of that. Uh, if you want to name the package before you actually build it, what you'll want to do is come over here and change it. Now, I usually put a dash and then put the version number. If you want to get the version number, you could come over here, you could get info on it. Let's get info. There we go. We can see the version here, right there. And let's copy that and we can come over here and paste it in. And so now our package will have the correct uh, version number on it. Now once we're ready to go, we just hit build as package. It's gonna ask us where we wanna uh, put, put our uh, package at. I'll just throw it on the desktop for now. And uh, we'll go ahead and build it. Let's give it a sec here. All right, and that should be it. Now if we come over here, um, let's go ahead and look at our package here. If we get information on it, we'll see. Oh, it's an installer package. It shows where it's located at, how much, uh, what the size is of it. And what we can do is we can go ahead and test this out. So what we're gonna do is we're going to actually delete Google Chrome. Let's go ahead and move this into the trash. And so now we need to put Google Chrome back. Well, let's go ahead and use the application that we just created. So I'll go ahead and open this and it's going to open the installer application. We'll click install, we'll enter our password. And again, this might take a few seconds here. And we're done. So let's go ahead and hit close and you'll see Google Chrome is here. Uh, so we just installed it using using this package. So that's probably the easiest way to create uh, an installer package uh, in Jamf Composer is to just drag resources over to the left and it will automatically populate them. Um, now what, one little tidbit I'll show you here. If you wanted to build this package and have it do uh, various scripts, so you could have it uh, you know, perform some type of action before it installs these uh, components or some type of action after it installs the components. If you expand this little arrow over here, you'll see script setting snapshots. And if you open up the scripts here, there's nothing there. But if we right click, right click or secondary click on the scripts folder, you'll see it gives us the, example, the, the option to add various scripts here and so you can go ahead and add a uh, pre-install pre or post-install script so pre-install would be obviously before uh, post-install would be after so if you wanted it to you know delete like an old version of chrome if let's say you wanted it to check and see if there were any old versions of chrome and delete them first before installing this version of chrome you could create a pre-install script have it run an rm command and remove uh, whatever you want it to remove and then it will go ahead and install Google Chrome See, you could even add a post install script after that and have it open Google Chrome if you wanted um, But we're not going to get into that. But if you want to take advantage of those resources uh, This is where you would do that
All right, now that we've created a package, um, just dragging and dropping Google Chrome in, we're gonna go ahead and create what's called a snapshot package. Now what a snapshot does is it looks at what is currently on the system and it kind of takes a picture of how the system looks. Then it waits for you to do some actions and then it compares that uh, to what it initially saw when it first did the, the picture of how the system looks. It compares the changes that were made and then it tells you about them. It shows all the files that were installed. Um, you can even do a modified a snapshot which will tell you all the files that changed um, which may be important at certain times but right now we're just gonna do the normal snapshot. So to do that you go, go, ahead, and go ahead and just click new and then you'll just click normal snapshot and we'll call this test snapshot all right and actually I need to oh we're good we're ready okay I'll go ahead and hit next here it's gonna take the snapshot and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this Google Chrome package uh, that we just created in the last step and we're gonna go ahead and install that now and it's going to install Google Chrome which will be the change that we need uh, for the snapshot to find so we'll go ahead and let that install that might take a little bit and basically Jamf Composer right now is checking. Well, it's actually waiting. It's waiting for you to do whatever actions you're gonna do. Once you're done with those and we click Create Package Source, it's gonna go and make another index of the, of the system and then compare it to the previous index. And that's how it knows what files have been installed since the last uh, time that it took a, a snapshot or a picture of your system and it will be able to tell us, let's go ahead and hit close, we'll hit create, and it will be able to tell us what's changed on the system and we can incorporate that into a package automatically. This is really powerful if you want to, say, take a package from a third party. So let's say, let's say, let's say Google Chrome offered, uh, or let's say Google offered Chrome in a package format, okay? and you wanted to use their package, but you didn't know exactly what it installed. You wanted to see what it's installing. Snapshot is gonna show you what it's installing and where it's installing. Okay, so if you look here back in, in uh, Jamf Composer, it automatically found that we are installing the Google Chrome app from this package. And now we can take this and modify it however we want. We can add more files to it, we can add scripts, we can do whatever we want here. Um, and then you would just do the same thing, build this package, save it, and you're ready to go. Now, obviously, uh, we use some very simplistic uh, apps and, and installers here. The sky's the limit as far as how technical you wanna get with this. Uh, it's a very powerful tool. Um, just the highlights that I'd wanna make sure you, that you are doing, or the, the kind of rules of thumb I wanna make sure that you take when you do this are, Make sure permissions are correct, because if you're going to go and deploy this thing to a thousand different machines, you want to make sure that whatever the file is that you're deploying, that it inherits the correct permissions it's supposed to get when it goes to the target machine. If it doesn't have the right permissions, you're going to have a lot of problems on your hands. Um, and you know, if the permissions have to get really complicated, um, you can always include a post install script to change those permissions. Um, if you need it to kind of inherit permissions from a particular user on the system, something like that, that's where you're going to want to include a post install script. All right, so that's all I have on Jamf Composer. Um, obviously, like I said, there's a lot more you can do with it, but as far as the you know bread and butter of using Jamf Composer, that's it. Uh, you know, just drag components in. You can create packages that way, scripts, that sort of thing, or use the uh, snapshot uh, method to capture what's happening on the system and then modify it from there. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, liking, subscribing. If, if you've been uh, watching my videos or you like the content, um, just let me know uh, if you have any questions in the comments. Catch you later. Thanks for watching. Peace.